Welcome to Journey Church Online. I'm Jackie Taylor, Associate Pastor. I'm so glad you're watching with us. Please fill out our eConnect card and let us know where you're watching from today. A link to the eConnect card can be found in the video description. You can also check out our website, journeyconnection.com, and find out more about our community of faith and how to get involved. I'm so glad that you're here. Let's get that journey band in here.
forever. It can transform us from the inside out and lead us into a new future. Whether or not we answer the call is up to us. God calls each of us to something greater than ourselves. We're called to impact our world with the message and love of Jesus Christ. Equipping us all with gifts and talents, God gives us the tools necessary to accomplish His will. For God's gifts and His call can never be withdrawn. Hearing God's voice can be challenging. It doesn't always come as a loud ring, but can come as a whisper. Even when we don't feel God is speaking to us, He's there. Be the change you wish to see in the world. This statement is true, but an even greater truth is, be the change that God calls you to be in the world. Will you answer the call? Why? Why? Why do you even bother getting out of bed in the morning? Why do you live life the way you do? What is the why of your existence? Is your why mostly about yourself? Are you the center of your existence? Are you selfishly focused on yourself more than anything else? Are you like five-year-old Kevin? His mother was preparing pancakes for him and for his three-year-old brother, Ryan. The boys began to argue over who would get the first pancake. Their mother saw the opportunity for a moral lesson. She said to them, If Jesus were sitting here, he would say, let my brother have the first pancake. I can wait. Immediately, Kevin turns to his younger brother and says, Okay, Ryan, you be Jesus. How often do people today use religious talk that in reality is just a cover for their selfishness? Does selfishness bring true happiness? Of the people you know who live primarily for themselves, are they truly happy? A study was conducted by Bernard Rimland, director of the Institute for Child Behavior Research. Rimland found that the happiest people are those who help others. Each person involved in the study was asked to list 10 people they knew best and to label them 
as happy or not happy. Then they were to go through the list again and label each one as selfish or unselfish. They were to use this definition of selfishness. A stable tendency to devote one's time and resources to one's own interests and welfare and unwillingness to inconvenience oneself for others. Remnant found that all the people labeled happy were also labeled unselfish. He concluded that those whose activities are devoted to bringing themselves happiness are far less likely to be happy than those whose efforts are devoted to making others happy. Philippians 2, 3, and 4 say, Don't do anything for selfish purposes, but with humility think of others as better than yourselves. Instead of each person watching out for their own good, watch out for what is better for others. How different would our world be if each person, instead of watching out for our own good, was watching out for what is better for others? Okay, if we're not to do anything for our own selfish purposes, well, what are to be the purposes of our lives? As we heard in the video, God calls us to something greater than ourselves. There are five biblical purposes that persons who are genuinely seeking to follow Jesus are called to. Embracing these purposes reveals we understand that the lives God has created us for are to be about more than ourselves. So, what are the purposes God has for individuals and for churches? Purpose number one, worship. Most everyone has heard the word worship and has a general understanding that it has something to do with what we are genuinely devoted to. What are some things we wrongly worship? Putting them before God. What are some things we are in reality more selfishly devoted to than to God? Money or material possessions? Recreational activities and sports. And yes, sportianity is a real thing because sports definitely is an object of worship for many people in our culture. Political systems and nationalism. Ourselves. This is what Jesus said about worship. God is sheer being itself, spirit those who worship Him must do it out of their very being, their spirits, their true selves in adoration. Genuine worship has as its subject the Creator God of this universe who is sheer being itself and who is to be adored, celebrated. Some people think worship is the musical part of a Sunday morning service. That may be a part of worship, but that is not what worship is all about. Some people think worship is the sermon in a Sunday morning service. That may be a part of worship, but that too is not what worship is all about. Some people wrongly think that worship of God is something done to get God to do what they want God to do for them. Some people wrongly think that they can get their worship on, but that is incorrect because worship is not about us. Here is a definition of true worship. Worship is the selfless expression of extravagant love that honors and celebrates the God who is perfect love and submits itself completely to the will of God. True worship is a matter of the heart that lovingly expresses itself through a lifestyle of holy obedience to God. Worship is to be a non-negotiable priority in the life of every follower of Jesus. Jim White 
tells of when he visited Moscow to teach a class shortly after the fall of communism. One night, he went with a group of students who were in the class to the famed Boyshoi Ballet. It was a long, wonderful evening. Afterward, they took the subway back to where they were staying. The students then said, come and let us celebrate. White was tired, but the students were so intent on him joining them that he went. And then he found out what celebration meant to them. They wanted to gather in a dining room and worship God. They did this late into the night with more passion and sincerity than he had ever experienced. It did not matter that he did not know Russian. They worshiped God together. He went to bed puzzled. He had never seen such passion for spontaneous and heart-filled worship. He was curious as to why they were so ready and eager to offer God love and honor. He found the answer the following Sunday when he was invited to speak at a church in North Moscow. A former underground church that had met in secret was now meeting openly in a schoolhouse. The service lasted for nearly three hours. There were three sermons from three different speakers with long periods of singing between each message. Throughout the entire three hours, they never let up. In spite of the length of time, they never seemed to tire. Even at the end, they didn't seem to want to go home. White remarked to the pastor of the church that in the United States, you're doing well to go a single hour before every watch in the place starts beeping. This is before smartphones. The pastor of the church responded, it was only a few years ago that we would have been put in prison for doing what we did today. We were never allowed to gather together as a community of faith and offer worship to God. And we are just so happy and almost in a state of unbelief that we can do this now publicly together and we don't want it to end. And not knowing what the future might hold for us, we know that every week might just be our last. So we never want to stop. So we keep worshiping together as long as we can. White thought to himself, I will never think about worship the same again. I've been too casual about it, too laid back, taking it too much for granted. These people know what it's about, really about. And because of that, they have been willing and would be willing again to suffer for it, to be imprisoned for it, to die for it. It has that much meaning and payoff and significance. It matters that much. And friends, it should matter that much to all of us. Purpose number two, discipleship. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. Following Jesus is not about personal convenience or comfort, but about a cross-inspired life of sacrificial love. Discipleship involves a dying to self. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the author of the classic Christian book, The Cost of Discipleship, wrote, When Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die. Discipleship is about putting to death our selfishness, giving up our own selfish way, and following however God leads. Discipleship 
is about self-denial. Bill Ashball was once preaching about giving up your own way and taking up your cross, about denying yourself and following Jesus. Several days later, he received an email from one of his second grade parishioners. It said, I was wondering to know if I can pick my own cross. I don't really want the cross that's supposed to be my cross. What I mean is, I don't know if the cross I have is a, uh, the one Jesus picked for me. What I mean is, um, again, I, I think I should have a different one. What I mean is, I don't think my brother should be my cross because, well, I think he is too difficult. How do I deal with him just in case that is the cross Jesus gave me? Now, we may laugh at that. But how many of us just might be the cross that someone else has to bear? We become a cross to others when we are constantly selfish instead of selfless like Jesus. When we are true disciples of Jesus, we do not continually insist on our own way. We are willing to deny what we want in order to put others before ourselves. Now, that does not mean allowing others to selfishly trample all over us. It does not mean allowing others to abuse, take advantage of, malign, or intentionally hurt us. If that's taking place, we should respectfully and yet firmly set limits so that kind of thing doesn't happen as we appropriately care for ourselves. Discipline is about self-sacrifice. It involves a willingness to sacrifice our energy, time, money to further the mission that Jesus started. It involves inconveniencing ourselves so that others may experience the life-transforming love and forgiveness of Christ in our broken and selfish world. It means faithfully giving of who we are and what we possess regardless of the cost. Discipleship is about selfless surrender. This happened in the life of a girl named Carrie. She suffered and battled cancer courageously. And through her life, that was completely surrendered to Jesus, she became a source of strength and grace to others. Her family, the doctors and nurses who took care of her, her friends. She selflessly allowed the doctors to try different procedures in the hope that it might help not only herself, but others. Through it all, her suffering changed her. Her spirit became more beautiful, more concerned about what was truly important in life, more free. She accepted the cross of Jesus and the way of selfless surrender to demonstrate the meaning of the sacrificial love of God. When she was near death, she suddenly sat up in bed with her family around her. She said, can you see how beautiful it is? Wow. Those around her could not see what she saw, but they could see the beauty of goodness shining out from Carrie as she was dying. Such is the power of the cross that disciples of Jesus embrace. Purpose number three, ministry. The Apostle Paul said in Acts 20, 24, I don't cling to my life for my own sake. The only value I place on my life is that I may finish my race, that I may fulfill the ministry that Jesus our King has given me that I may gladly tell the good news of God's grace. Every follower of Jesus 
is to fulfill the ministry Jesus has given us. Every one of us who embraces faith in Jesus is a minister. And we're to live out that faith actively in service. There is no such thing as sitting on the sidelines for persons who are truly seeking to follow Christ. So I want to directly ask you, are you clinging to your life for your own sake and for what you want? Are you failing to engage in some ministry for Jesus because of that? If so, what do you think Jesus would say to you about that selfish focus? Is it because you are not genuinely seeking to be a disciple of Christ? We live in a world in which there's such need for ministry. According to our world in data.org, globally, 800,000 people die from suicide every year. That's one person every 40 seconds. That's twice the number from homicide. And tragically, suicide is one of the leading causes of death in young people. The psychiatrist Paul Meyer wrote, I've had millionaire businessmen come to my office and tell me they have big houses, yachts, condominiums, nice children, a beautiful mistress, an unsuspecting wife, secure corporate positions, and suicidal tendencies. They have everything this world has to offer except one thing, inner peace and joy. They come to my office as a last resort, begging me to help them conquer the urge to kill themselves. God has purpose for our lives that we engage in ministry to share the hope of the gospel in a despairing world through which people may experience genuine, godly peace and joy. When we embrace and engage in ministry, in service, we participate in God's loving, redemptive mission to transform and save the world. Why would you not want to be a part of that? So again, I want to directly ask you, how will you commit to engage in active ministry and dedicated service that is selfless instead of being so self-focused? God is calling you to selfless ministry and service. How will you respond? Purpose number four, community. Scripture says, if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other. It is not God's intention that people be isolated and alone. If we are living in the light of God's love, we will share that love in fellowship, in community with each other. Max Licato writes that administrators of one of the largest hospitals in America have cited loneliness as a major reason for overcrowded emergency rooms. Parkland Hospital in Dallas, Texas made this startling discovery as they were looking for ways to unclog their emergency system. They analyzed data and compiled a list of high utilizers. They identified 80 patients who went to four emergency rooms 5,139 times in a 12-month period, costing the system more than $14 million. They commissioned teams to meet with these 80 patients to determine the reason for their repeated ER visits. Do you know what was the number one determinant? Loneliness, a sense of isolation. The ER provided attention, kindness, and care. They wanted to know that someone cared. God created us for community. God's purpose is that we share life together and not live lonely, isolated lives. I want to urge you, if you are not currently engaged with one of our church's journey groups, either in person or online, go to our website and look up info on them. 
I really hope you will connect with one of our groups and that you will experience authentic community. It is God's purpose for our lives. Purpose number five, outreach. Jesus commanded, go then to all peoples everywhere and make them my disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That was the last thing Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew. I take that to mean it was crucial for his followers. It's called the Great Commission. Followers of Jesus are to reach out to all people everywhere to share the good news of God's salvation, that God wants to rescue everyone from sin, selfishness, brokenness. BBC News once reported on how a woman in her 30s was found on a Sunday morning outside a church lying in the snow. And she froze to death. The pastor said that the congregation was extremely sorry that something like that happened right outside their church. I have another direct question. How many of us are extremely sorry for people who are spiritually dying because they do not know the grace and love of Jesus. And then another question. What are we going to do about it? In this difficult, dark, discouraging, even despairing time in which we live, will we reach out and share with people that in Jesus there is hope. And with God's help, we can speak truth in love and make the world a better place. What will it take for us to share the good news of the gospel of God's never failing love? Do we love enough? Do we care enough? Well, would you pray with me? Creator God of this universe, who gives the gift of life, who wants us to experience a joy and a peace and a contentment and a happiness, you God who want to be in relationship with us, a loving relationship, and you want us to be in loving relationships with others and not be isolated and alone, Help us to realize that you call us to die to our selfishness so that we can experience life at its very best. You have divine purposes for our lives so that we can be a part of transforming this world, our communities, ourselves, when we embrace your purposes for our lives. Lord, we confess there are times when we allow selfishness to reign in us. Help us to repent or turn away from that selfishness. Forgive us and strengthen and empower us to live lives that are sold out for you, God, in which we worship you with whole hearts, in which we are committed to being more faithful disciples in which we engage in meaningful ministry and see lives changed, in which we experience authentic community and fellowship that blesses us and blesses others, and then in which, God, we, we reach out to be the love of Christ in a dying world. God, may we hear your call, and may we respond with our very lives. We pray this in Jesus. Amen.
We are so pleased that you were a part of this worship experience in the life of Journey Church. Uh, we hope that God's Holy Spirit has challenged you to live a life of love and self-giving and selflessness. And we want to help any of you who do not yet really know Jesus to experience the difference that Christ can make in your life. And so I want to invite you to take a, a, at least a small step of faith if you'd like to have a conversation with someone about what it means to follow Jesus, uh, we at Journey would love to have that conversation with you. It, it, go to our website, journeyconnection.com, and fill out the e-connect card there. and We would follow up with you and communicate with you. We can do it by text. We can do it over the phone. We can do it through Zoom. We take seriously that God wants to change lives and make lives better through the showing of his love please let us be the love of christ to you reach out to us and, and we'll reach back we promise or, or perhaps you've made the decision to follow jesus but you're not connected in community and i want to say again please check out on our website some of our journey groups we have them online they're in person we want to experience life with you to share life with you we want to be like loving family and friends to one another, give us the opportunity to help you connect. And for those of you who consider yourself to be a part of our Journey Church Online family, we're grateful when you worship with us online, and we want to give you the opportunity to make these online services a possibility that we continue. Also for our in-person ministries, as we care for people who are struggling with hurts and heartaches, and difficulty as we minister with people who are homeless and, and feel hopeless. You can give financially to make these ministries possible. Again, you can go to our website 
And you can give through that way. You can mail in your gifts. You can text in your gifts. And when you do, you not only bless the ministries of Journey Church, but you help us to engage with our mission partners around the world who are serving and caring for people. And in this time, following the tragic earthquake in Haiti, there's a desperate need for clean water. And one of our mission partners is called Water Mission. And they help provide water resources and the drilling of wells and caring for people who are struggling with matters many of us can't even conceive of. When you give, you help us to support Water Mission. We thank you for your faithfulness and your generosity. And we know that when you give, you're following in Jesus. We pray that you'd have a blessed week. Take care, friends.